for a little while now. Mm -hmm. um, what's what's different about the band dynamic with Brandon and uh, Eric on board? Um, I think I think it's it's a lot more. F I mean, it, it's different definitely. Um, we have a lot more options with two guys, uh, two guys who can both sing very well, um, and they're also very hyper, which is really nice. You know, it keeps the keeps the stage and antics and fun and. Um, gives more opportunities to get creative with stuff. So I, I dig it. I think it's great. Um, they're also, they all, when they came into the band too, they also had a, a new vigor for touring and being on the road. They loved it. They were real excited um, to be out there and to be playing. So that kind of put new life into us too. And uh, <coughs> we had been touring for years and kind of tired. And uh, so when they came in and were excited about it, it was kind of like a, all right, let's do this again, you know? And, and, uh, now we're going to take some time off, which is much needed after this year. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of stuff. But. Do, you, do you keep up with Josh? How's he doing? He's going well. He's actually going to be coming back and doing a reunion with us next Friday. He misses playing. He definitely does. So we, uh, we, we love him. He's always a part of the family, no matter mm -hmm. whether he's playing with us or not. So. Mm -hmm. Now, he left to kind of support his family? Yes. And spend time with them? Oh, mm -hmm. uh, his wife, yeah. He got, wife. just freshly got married and was like, I need to... Mm -hmm. be able to support her so now how many of you guys are married yourselves uh, uh, Justin and I are married Brandon's getting married in July mm -hmm. um, so he's stoked about that mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we're all happy for him he's, she's mm -hmm. a cool girl we actually just saw her the other day up. she's in she's in Michigan so mm -hmm. um, yeah it's it's a hard thing to do to be married and be on the road and be playing but it's a whole different element you know I've been telling my wife to write all of her feelings down and put a book out you know to, uh, the annals of a touring merch girl, you know, who's <laughs> married to the band, you know, and, uh, and she's thinking about that, so mm -hmm. that'd be kind of cool. Is it, a, is it a challenge to support families financially with where your band is right now? Um, <coughs> I think, yeah, it is. I, uh, God kind of always has provided, though. It's been interesting to see how things have just been taken care of, and, uh, you know, um, it's definitely, uh, in Brandon's case, he's getting ready to get married, so it's kind of a, what am I going to do, but he's been, I mean. He has fine things to do. Some of us do things when we're home, you know. Uh, I, I mean, Toby's a teacher, and now I'm starting, I'm starting like an online web, web store, and mm -hmm. um, Justin, like, fixes cars and, and does other stuff like that, mm -hmm. and Kyle will just do really whatever you, I mean, if you can find stuff, you know. <laughs> you just be creative, and I mean. You know, you can really, you can find a way to make it, you know, to make it work if you really want to do it, you know. So, mm -hmm. yes and no. You just, you know, you have the ability to plan for it, but you mm -hmm. do things to better your quality of life. Yeah. So. What you learn as a band, you keep your quality of life good, but a lot less than the American standard. <laughs> so, and that's, I'm fine with that. I think all of us yeah, are. I so. mean, you realize that you don't need a lot of things, you yeah. know, and it's and that they're necessities. So you live you live on a minimalistic, you know, kind simply. Of a, yeah, it's simply not minimalistic, but simply. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think uh, ASCAP, which is kind of a, a musicians organization that kind of takes care of people, um, they uh, they put an article out recently about what the actual costs of a regular independent band are, and uh, yeah, it, it'd be pretty. Uh, it's pretty difficult. I mean, you have a manager, publicist, booking agent, and then you have to split everything with the label in some ways. You know, sometimes the labels take part of your merch, which bands, if you're a band, never do that. It's the worst thing in the world. We've never done it, and I think it's the biggest ripoff in the world. Um, 360 deals stink. So uh, that's just my little <laughs> soapbox. But um, it's hard, but at the same time, it's a growing process, and if your band's growing, it gets better. You know. And, um, being creative, we've had a lot of conversations over the last few days about how we can be more efficient with gas. Uh, we spent a lot of money on gas last year, and that was like, um, man, that's insane. So uh, it, it's a big pie that gets split up, and depends on how big the pie is. Our, our pie is like this right now. It's, <laughs> it's getting split up. Okay. Here's the pie. Here's our piece. <laughs> What's the best way for fans to support you guys as far as buying t shirts or buying CDs or what kind of help you pay the bills for the rest of the Um, come on. Uh, 
coming out to our shows definitely is the biggest thing. Buying buying stuff at shows, um, you know, order it online that always helps too from our site. Um, but coming into our shows, buying it from our merch table is always a, a thing that helps us a lot. Bands live off of merchandise sales, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what we do for shows pays for gas and and, and you know stuff like that. But um, yeah, just I mean, you know, and if you pray, just pray a lot for us. <laughs> <laughs> we, we definitely use that. <laughs> yeah. So. so Keep taking it levels up and levels up and uh, keep it so that people are you know are happy and, and you know just enjoy the music you know and continue to captivate people you know with the sounds so yeah I think it's gonna be good we're gonna we we talked about it and uh, we're gonna be going back in with Johnny Rio again um, to do the next record as well I think we feel felt like uh, this is the last record was recorded with Josh and the the old the old Flatfoot the new Flatfoot we need to kind of continue where we were going with Blackthorn and. We both have, both Johnny and us have a, have a, uh, a good vision for where where we felt Blackthorn could have been a little bit better in certain areas and where we can step up for the next um, time. And one of those areas is uh, moving to a studio that's a real well-known, good quality studio. So we're still working on that, making sure we can get the time booked and um, we're going to rock it out. So we're not sure how what labels or what, how we're going to do it, maybe independently or with the label, but... Uh, we are right at first, so. <laughs> we haven't done a whole lot of tours with bands, like long tours with bands that do share our faith. So we're kind of used to not really being, not, I mean, when it comes to faith, not on the same level or wavelength um, with most of the bands that we tour with. Um, which is a challenge at times, but it's just kind of another, another tour, you know. So when we get a chance to tour with bands that are Christians and that do share our faith, we always enjoy it. Um, spending the Warped Tour this summer with uh, Haste the Day was cool and mm -hmm. kind of talking about God with them on a daily basis and encouraging each other. That was really neat. Um, um, we, you know, we've never been, I don't think that, I mean, even before I was was a part of Flop, but it's never been, you know, it's never been a band that I've seen with too many other Christian bands other than like a cornerstone and mm -hmm. and um, it's kind of I think it's it's awesome to go out with, with you know it's cool to go out with Project eighty six and Waverly. And it was really encouraging and you know, um, it was cool to um, to just see how, how they work as well and and then go to the other side of it and then and go with you know, people who don't necessarily believe or have different views and it totally gives you a whole new perspective on life and, and just uh, it's really cool to um, you know when you get into conversations about it to you know just to see other people's perspectives and, and um, you know and, and then you kind of find out really what you're made of as well you know which is which is cool I mean you know I mean it, it caused you to think you know for yourself and not just because well this is the way I was you know so. I think I think uh, loving people is something that you really learn how to do especially when they don't agree with what you believe and uh, I always find like when Jesus went out, he spent a lot of time with people that weren't necessarily the perfect believers um, uh, at the time, and so he he you know he showed what that loving people was like, and um, I love putting we all love putting ourselves in a position where we can love people that are the <coughs> opposite from us, and uh, just just uh, give them, you know hang out and love, show them the love of Christ the way that he would have so. <laughs> Flatfoot has kind of worked, it, honestly, it, it's seeming like we're all working the same way. Uh, Brandon will come and say, hey guys, what do you think about this riff? And we're like, oh cool, Justin beats a beat out with it, and I riff it. Um, we've been having a good time creating riffs. Uh, lyrically lately, it's been a little rougher, just because it, we, need the time, we need time to like meditate and focus. And we've been in the van, well, 47 days of our year last year, we're spent driving, like, 47 total, time. total total hours like we spent literally 47 days in the car and 
that's hard because you have a guy that's trying to drive and keep his focus and he usually has to have some music going and it's hard to write when I have a hard time writing with other music there. Um, but um, it, 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 it comes in all different forms, honestly. Um, and Multi-dimensional writing, that's what yeah. I call it. <laughs> One of our favorite shows to see you guys at is Cornerstone, and I'm just curious, you always make such an event of it, um, what inspires the themes, or did you guys like go to music festivals we, when you were younger? And we sit in the van, come up with the most absurd ideas possible that make us laugh till we fall off the yeah. chairs, and, and then we come up with one big thing that we think will clinch it. And then we go and we run with it. We've got like seven different ideas yeah. going around right now. I think the biggest thing for for the for to, if a festival if an idea for a theme is going to take root, it needs to have a crowd participation aspect yeah. to it that we kind of can tie in with the theme. So if there if there's no way to tie that in, the theme will never happen with us. Um, unless I don't know. I don't know. We have. We have some interesting ideas. <laughs> yeah, some we'll see what happens. Like I don't even know. Um, I think I think that whole idea started with the root of the idea of uh, what Five Iron used to do years ago. They were kind of an influence on the whole, make an event of your show, and make it a fun time. Um, Blast the Rocket Man would do the same thing. They would create this whole huge theme and stage plot and everything behind what they would do, um, and that's what made it an event that people wanted to come and see. Yeah, they like getting weird water stuff thrown on them and, and just see people dressed up in costumes jumping around like fools. So, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, and if you can, if you can take and captivate someone's, someone's imagination and they create a memory out of that that will last forever. Yeah. We have a full week of just building things in our backyard, <laughs> you know. Uh, kids at Cornerstone always come through and so uh, that's, they make the show while we just give them the ideas. So. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the world? <laughs> Support local music. Yeah, <laughs> keep coming to the shows. Honestly, like one other thing about helping bands out is like when you go to their shows, it helps their numbers for their show, which means they can come back to that town because the venue will let them. Um, one reason we come to St. Louis all the time is because the venue we built a great relationship with them, and kids come out when we play, which is it's a really nice thing. It took a long time. I remember mm -hmm. playing at the Creepy Crawl and having two <laughs> people there, but I just keep supporting local music and always love the music that you play and never play it for, uh, yeah, really play for money. Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's, chances are you're not going to make much, <laughs> but you got to do it for love because you love to do it and you feel called to do it and we all definitely do, so.